The concept of sponsorship has is is kind of no longer. Sponsorship, I feel like, has a resonance of of some kind of a one-way transactional thing, like give money and we'll put your logo on a wall. That's not good enough anymore. That's, I, I don't see value in that anymore. Instead, it's a partnership. It's what can we do together? What are your core values? What is your purpose? Do they match ours? Can we do something bigger together? Today, businesses are distinguished not by what they do, but what they stand for, by what they mean. So their purpose, their values and principles is becoming increasingly important as a way of distinguishing themselves when seeking capital or customers or employees or a supply chain that supports the things they're doing. And you want two things to be in place from an ethical perspective. Firstly, the source of the funds itself shouldn't be intrinsically compromised in a way that makes either party uncomfortable. There's a second layer, which is to do with the relationship between the two organisations. They may have quite different values and principles, might have different objectives. So there's a couple of layers when you think about sponsorship that need to be in place. So in the arts we see sponsorship from a whole range of industries, from gambling, alcohol, asbestos, immigration detention and the fossil fuels industry. So, and that's not limited to those, but those are ones that I think we definitely have some questions around the ethics of that relationship. If people can find clean money, I'm all there, I'm there, but I can't find it. I've never found it. And so therefore I need to find in my heart the right way forward. And that's a, an ethical dilemma, case by case. Um, Alcohol is a very interesting sponsorship issue for us. Um, you know, I'm, I grew up with an alcoholic father. I have, I, I, I abstain from alcohol. There's a whole lot of behaviors that are personal behaviors. But as I talk to people who work and who enjoy the Sydney Festival, they enjoy responsible drinking. And so the alcohol sponsorship is part of that. At some point when, you know, issues of violence, issues of deaths in the streets and the impact of alcohol in Aboriginal communities, what are we doing? Individuals have to weigh up what their power is. And often the power differential is what we're talking about, that the sponsor or the government actually is perceived to have more power than the artist. The corporations and the individuals who sponsor, say, the arts or universities or hospitals, they get a lot in return for their money. So artists and arts organisations should become more picky and research their sponsors a little bit more deeply. So when we think about sponsorships, we think about our values um, as a business and we use that as a guiding principle to who aligns with our values and who can share that message in the most appropriate way with impact. We really believe all the way from our top leadership down to any employee that you talk to into the business that business can be a powerful platform for social change. When certain aspects of a business don't completely align with an arts organization, should we partner with that organization anyway? And I say, absolutely we should. I think that there's a real risk in making the decision not to partner with a company because one aspect of, of their business rather than really understanding where we align and what we can do together because if an arts organization takes the position of determining right from wrong in a binary system, we're not going to have very much art funding left. I think the situation with the Sydney Biennale a couple of years ago is a fantastic case study in these pressures of government and sponsor. So as I saw, a group of artists said that they were going to boycott the Sydney Biennale because the Sydney Biennale was receiving money from Transfield, who had been given the contract to build and run the detention centres in Manus and Nauru. The Sydney Biennale is, is the biggest career opportunity I'd had in my life so far. It's, it's pretty much like the grand final of the art world. But the more I thought about it and the more I spoke with other people who were involved in the exhibition who were equally as concerned about this association, the more I realised that my participation in the Biennale was an active endorsement 
of the activities that Transfield was, was participating in. We were caught off guard in a media storm around something that was really important to Australia at that time. Um, we certainly didn't want to bring down the Biennale, but we wanted to, to make sure that it was a really strong comment on the government's activities. The core of what the partnership was between Transfield and the Biennale got completely lost in something that we were actually very far away from. After the second group of artists withdrew, the Biennale director, Luca Belgiorno Nettis, he stepped down from the Biennale board and the relationship between Transfield and the Biennale was ended. I, you know, the Belgiorno Nettis is, and they're, they're absolutely lovely people. And at the time, I can't imagine how conflicted they were in that they were associated with something that they would have thought was ho horrific. Um, it, The problems, I think, often arise when that conversation doesn't take place, where there's a presumption that there's an alignment of interests. They don't go very deep. They don't work out what would be the boundary conditions. The money starts to flow. And then something is triggered, which puts the relationship at risk. And people on both sides are surprised because there wasn't clarity at the outset. People do make mistakes and I think that's where that conversation with your stakeholders and being open and transparent about what that relationship means or the developments of that relationship and the context behind it. What I worry about is also that the values, the corporate citizen has inarticulate values. They don't often know what they stand for. And if they do have values which align in terms of arts or sport, that it's often done just for a financial transaction. And I worry about that in the long term. The ethics of sponsorship and um, being a good corporate citizen, I think that plunges us right into the question of how much boards of companies can give away. In Australia, we need to have some law reform to make it clear that directors have the ability when it is in the best interests of the corporation as a whole to put the interests of shareholders just a bit aside and to work on and with other interests in order to drive the corporation forward in the long-term benefit and that this narrative of um, only working for the shareholder will go back to being much more in balance with the other interests of the um, people touched and affected by corporations than it has been for 30 years. From a consumer standpoint, research, research shows that consumers and customers think that businesses have a social responsibility to stand up for what they believe in are aligned to certain values. Um, the social impact that businesses can have on society are immense and CEOs coming to say, these are important issues for our company in our country. And often people will start to say, well, no, your job is about making money and, you know, and it's about the shareholder value and da-da-da-da. And they forget, those critics forget that in fact companies are, by its very nature, groups of people. And those groups of people have values and they are working for that organisation for very particular reasons. You can't just look at the social good that they're doing when you look at the ethics of an organisation. You have to look at the whole picture. And for me, that just doesn't balance out. Doing a few good things on the side as part of their profit generation doesn't negate the unethical activities that they might be doing. I think sponsorship only works when it's a collaborative tool. I think that when it's the coming together of equals and a discussion and an articulate conversation about their values and what you're thinking, that's the only way forward. But finding a, a, a sponsor who aligns neatly is always difficult. If we all examine the role that we play and shift our practices to be more attuned to the ethical questions of our time and there will always be ethical questions but I think that if we all take responsibility for the part we play then those questions can be resolved ethically. Maybe you could take a long-term view about it.
Maybe you don't have to boast on the television or in social media about it. Maybe you just have to put it in your annual report and watch the seed corn grow into something larger.